Hey guys, welcome back to Flatback Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this different layering animation. If you're part of my ProMotion Crew community, then you can download this project file along with a bonus composition as well. If you're not already a member and you wanna download all my project files, then you can also check it out via that same link in the description below. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is just focus a lot on the animation side. I'm gonna run through a little bit about how I actually design this in the different layers, but I'm gonna focus a lot on the actual animation because primarily you're not going to be using the exact setup that I've got. You're just going to use a lot of the animation and maybe incorporate it into your own work. So I've just created a new composition here. These are my composition settings if you wanna follow along with exactly what I'm doing. But basically all I did was I just created a black background and this is just going to give us something to basically start with. The next thing I added then was this basically like this image here of these newspaper articles. This is just kind of like an interesting sort of background. It's just an image. And all I did was I just dragged that here onto my timeline. And to that, what I did was I added a bunch of effects. The first thing I did was I added an invert and that basically just makes it um, sort of just flips it to be black and white. I then basically added a hue and saturation and then I just brought down the lightness. So this is gonna darken that background, really kind of help it sort of blend into that background a lot better. And then I added a motion tile over the top. These are the exact settings here if you wanted to follow along with something similar. Now, all I did to that was I created a position and a scale keyframe. You can create a position keyframe by hitting P on the keyboard and then you can create a position keyframe. And if I hit S, I can also create a scale keyframe. And basically all I did was I went across on my timeline and then I just created basically like a very slow sort of scale as well as a slight position. So nothing too fancy there. And then on top of that, what I did was I added just some little highlight elements. So what I did was I got basically like these little elements here called like the paper print. And I just sort of drag this here on top and then I just sort of scale it down to something like this. And all I do to kind of get this to blend in like I've done with these ones is I just go in here and I change the blending mode to be like add or something like that. Then to it, what I also do is I come up here and I add just some little, like basically like a hue and saturation. Again, you can find all of these by searching for them up here. But basically all I did is once I've, once I've made that black and white by dragging down on the saturation slider, I can hit T and then sort of just scale in that opacity until I kind of get exactly what I'm sort of going for or the look that I'm going for. Now to animate these, all I did was I basically just sort of position them here. I hit S to bring up the scale keyframes. I create two scale keyframes, go across on my timeline, and then I can create two more keyframes here, scale keyframe there. And I can also just create one here. It just kind of gives it this nice little sort of scale, just something to add a little bit of texture here into the background. That's what sort of layering is all about. I talk about layering a lot in my Animation Master and my Animation Pro course. Animation Master is my beginner's course for people that have never used After Effects before and wanna learn how to create all sorts of different types of animations, but also learn about principles like this, about layering different effects together to create animations that really stand out, you know, really cool looking designs. My Animation Pro course is for people who are more comfortable using After effects. So it's not a beginner course. I go a lot deeper into the principles of animation and really understanding, you know, layering and layering different effects together to really create things that stand out. You can find links for both of those courses down in the description below. So that's already starting to look quite good. Now to get the actual reveal, I wanted a bit of like this paper sort of unfolding effect. So what I did was I created just another composition and this can be just exactly the same settings that you're using at the moment. And based on this composition, all I'm gonna do is just create a new solid. And this can be basically whatever color, but I'm just gonna use a black here just so I can see what's going on. And then what I'm going to do is I want to basically just kind of create a mask. So I'm gonna hit G to bring up the pen tool. And I'm just gonna basically draw out a very simple mask here, 
something like this. And then you can kind of create a position path or a mask path keyframe there. And I'm gonna go across on my timeline and I'm just gonna move these ones down. And along the way, what I want to do is just basically sort of move these around because I want different sort of shapes to be created. So I'm just sort of messing around here with the positions. So at the moment that doesn't look great. And what we want to do is we want to really try and blend this better into our background. So I'm just going to go back to my original one here. So what we do is we find that composition. We're just going to drag it here underneath this article background. Then I basically want to link this article layer to that reveal mask. So I'm going to go into the track mat settings and set that to be the reveal. And you'll notice that what it does is it now reveals that layer underneath. By doing it this way rather than the individual layer, if we scale up that layer or we move things or change things around, you're going to have to reanimate that mask. So you're going to run into issues basically. So by doing it this way, that layer is always going to be tracked to that layer. So it'll follow that layer always. And I can also just offset that start position however I like. So I could change the scale or the position of this layer, which is the actual image, however I like, and it won't affect that mask animation, basically. The other great thing is if I go back in here and change any settings, so if I move this mask around, it's automatically going to update that main composition. So this is really handy because it means that now we have sort of one central controller that's controlling all of these different things. Now the real icing on the cake here to make this all sort of look more seamless is to come up here and create basically like an adjustment layer. And to that adjustment layer, what you're going to do is you're gonna add just a few little things. We're gonna add the posterized time effect. So you can just search for that up here. I've set mine to be 10. That's what gives it that sort of like really jittery stop motion sort of look. So that's what really sells this effect. The other thing I've also added is just some grain. These are the settings I've used. And then I just like to add a little bit of sharpen over the whole thing. So on top of that, what I'm also going to do is I like to just add a few more now sort of effects over the top. So I'm going to add a paper background effect. And basically these are just simply images here. So this is just like an image here of a piece of paper. And all I do is I just drag it here on top and I just change the blending mode. So for this one, I'm using a multiply. And if I scale it up and down, you can't really clearly see it on this layer because it's so dark, but on lighter layers, you'll see that basically coming through. You can also just mess around by changing this blending mode to be whatever you like, and that'll kind of get different looks. So I've basically added that. I also have added another one, which is like this paper texture, and I also just add that over the top. And I've changed the blending mode to be something like color burn. Again, the blending mode will depend on the exact layer that you're you're using. The next part is I kind of added this image here of an earth sort of like popping up like this. So what I did was I just had like an image here of an earth. I just dragged it here onto my timeline. And then to this, what I did was I just added basically like a hue and saturation. And then I just set it to be like a colorize. So the colorize basically just makes it a solid color or one color and you can change the hue, these exact settings I've used for mine. And then over the top of that, I've added just a bit of a glow. So that kind of gives it that nice sort of soft glow look on the outside. Just kind of really makes the whole thing, you know, come together, look really nice. You can also go in here to the lightness settings if you want to darken down that background a little bit more. But overall, that's looking pretty good. Now I just need to animate this earth here. So what I did was I just simply used that same reveal mask that we already created. I just dragged basically another one straight in underneath. And then I can link, if I go to my track mat settings, I can link to that earth reveal. Now the beauty of this is that because I have this as a set animation, I can now change the direction. So if I want it animating in from you know, sort of like right to left, I can also do that. 
I can also have it animating in from the top down. It's really up to you. That's the great thing about having this as a separate composition. So once I kind of had those two, then I was ready to bring in that next layer. And this is really what it's all about with this animation. You want to basically think about bringing in the layers from the back forward. It doesn't always have to be that way, but it's the most simple sort of approach to to first start using when you're trying to animate anything. You wanna just think about working from one point to another. The next thing I brought in here was, I just sort of had this image here of a, what I called like a rocky sort of terrain. And for this one, I also just added another terrain reveal underneath, basically that same effect. Again, I've just used it in a different way. If you wanna mix it up a little bit, you can try basically like stretching it out or you can even just basically make it bigger than that layer and that will basically change the way that it's going to animate that layer in. To that terrain layer, what you can also do is add basically like a black and white. That'll just make it black and white. And then I just added a brightness and contrast just to sort of animate this whole thing nicely together. The other great thing about using these individual layers here is I've also can double up that same effect. So if I'm happy with that reveal, I don't have to keep duplicating that reveal. For instance, here I've added just an image here of an astronaut standing here. I can link to that same terrain reveal underneath. The only downside of using this method is that it will animate in exactly at the same time that that terrain is. So if you wanted you know, one layer then the next layer, you may have to use basically like an offset to basically like you know, create double duplicates and then offset them. The other thing you can also kind of do here is if you link this one to your terrain, so if I've linked my astronaut to my terrain, I can also just kind of create a scale keyframe here and go across and create a very slow sort of zoom in here and that just again kind of animates all of those layers as one you can also attach that terrain reveal to that same layer so that they're all basically moving together as one now what i'm doing here is i'm kind of not only animating each one in at a time but I'm also basically using colorize or the colorize effect to really draw the attention to the specific part that I want, you know, the viewer to be focused on, which is obviously this image here in the middle of the earth. And then over the top of that, what you can do is kind of add in some text. So for the text, all I simply do is I just added basically like my text tool here. I just type out whatever it's going to be. So it's going to be like moon or whatever you know, your text is going to be. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. I then go in here and change the blending mode to be like hard light or soft light, something like that. I can hit T to scale down that opacity. Then what I did was I simply just duplicated that same layer. And then to the one underneath, what I do is I add a drop shadow, which you can find up here. So it's a perspective drop shadow. These are the settings that I've used for that. I've set the I then change the blending mode to be divide. Now by doing that, what it's going to do is it's going to basically take the main text layer and minus that away from the shadow part. So we're just gonna end up with this cool kind of outline effect. Now, if I do that once more, so if I duplicate that layer and do it once more, so I'm just gonna basically turn off that layer and then I flip the direction and change the basically like the distance, you can create or exaggerate that effect even more. So now I've kind of got like a very thin edge and then I've got basically like this, this shadow, you know, much bigger on one side than the other. And I also just kind of position these two layers or these two text layers above my terrain. It's really important that when you're working with lots of different layers like this, that you link them all together. So I've got these two text layers are parented to that text layer underneath so that anything I do to that text layer, so for instance, I've got like a position 
keyframe that I've created here because I had it sort of sliding in. All of those layers will then follow that together. Now, if you're part of the Promotion Crew Gold subscription, then you can also download that project file and you're gonna get this bonus composition. I just take some of these things even further. So I just add in a few extra effects in this composition. Again, if you're already a member, you can download this entire project file. If you're not already, then it's definitely worth checking out. You'll not only get access to all of my project files, but you also get access to a lot of extras and bonuses. So definitely check that out via the link in the description. So that's it for this video. I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks you can use for your own animations. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I catch you in the next one.